So unless you've been living under a rock recently, you have probably have heard that Firefox and Mozilla are in the news, and not for a good reason. Basically what's happened is they've created themselves a terms of service for Firefox, and in that terms of service they've basically put language that expresses their interest in owning all of your data and selling it to someone else. Now they've walked some of that stuff back, and I don't need to add to the FUD that's been put out there. I really don't. A lot of other YouTubers have made videos about this and talked about why it's bad. I think we all know by now that it is bad and it looks worse than it actually is because Mozilla is an open source company. Their whole shtick is to be the browser of the people and they really should use that phrase because it's a good one. Basically, that's what Firefox is always supposed to be. It's supposed to be an alternative to Google and Chrome which is notorious for taking all of your data and selling it to as many people as possible. So, the fact that Firefox and Mozilla have decided to do this is an alarm for a lot of people. Like, what the hell are they doing? But this is not a new thing. So, what I want to do today is just talk a little bit about the situation and maybe posit some things that Mozilla could possibly do to rectify this situation. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we do, if you leave a thumbs up on this video, it'd be really appreciative. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you like Linux type content, go ahead and do so because it really helped the channel. So thank you. So let's talk a little bit about this whole thing and, and let's zoom out because this is not a new situation. Like I said, Mozilla is desperate for money. Now, if you look on their Wikipedia page, it says they brought in $593 million last year. That's a pretty penny. It's a little bit deceiving, though, considering that $400 million or thereabouts came directly from Google. And that money's going to go away. They're not going to make that money forever. They've known that for a very long time. So they have been trying to figure out new ways of bringing in revenue. But it's really going away this time because... Google has been declared a monopolist here in the United States, and something is going to change. If the legal system means anything in this country anymore, something is going to change with Google, and that is likely going to be something to do with Chrome. And that means that Google's probably not going to be paying that money anymore because it looks astonishingly bad for them. So that $400 million or thereabouts is going to go away and probably within the next year. So Mozilla has been desperate for years, but that desperation has reached a fever pitch. So they've had to bring in different people in the C-suite, and they're hoping that that new person can basically keep the ship floating. And the problem is, is that they seem to hire the dumbest people alive. <laughs> now, I, I say that in, in the most respectful way ever but the thing that i want to say about the whole c-suite over the course of the last 10 years not just the person who just got hired but all of them what the fuck have you guys been doing other than getting paid an extraordinary amount of money so for years mitchell baker has been making millions and millions of dollars now she's gone uh she moved up to the board of directors for a little while and then she has left most recently i believe uh, but the point is that she was there for a very long time, made millions of dollars a year. Now the new person comes in, they are also going to make millions of dollars a year. And basically what they've been doing for the last 10 years is living on the dregs of Firefox, such as it is, as less and less people actually use it, and trying desperately to find a new business to get themselves into. So they've tried like a VPN, they've tried advertising, they've tried, they're gonna try AI now, you know, you name it. If Google has done it, Mozilla has tried to copy it. That, that, that's that been their whole business model for 10, 15 years. Basically since Mozilla, Firefox has started to nosedive in terms of popularity, they've been trying to basically copy Google as much as possible and it hasn't worked. They, they haven't brought in hardly any money on their own. Now, Firefox does bring in some revenue, but not nearly enough to feed the 750 people that they employ or thereabouts. I do believe they actually hire, uh, actually employ more than that, or at least they used to. So how many they actually employ, I'm going to guess it's closer to a thousand. No matter what, it's still way too many for the amount of money that they bring in. And that's a huge deal. So they've become this very desperate corporation. And that desperation has gotten worse as the 
money from Google looks more and more certain to disappear. So they've been making stupid decisions. And this latest one of them basically saying, you want know to what? We're no longer the privacy company. We're customers' data. We'll instead take that data and sell it for some money because we need money desperately. We don't care how this looks. We don't care if it loses more people from Firefox because that doesn't matter. Remember, Firefox doesn't matter anymore. We just need to make as much money as possible so that the C-suite can continue to make those millions of dollars. Now, maybe that seems a little cynical, and it is, but I don't think that it's out of line because I think that it's true. I think that they want to keep their jobs and their millions of dollars flowing in, and their only ways of doing that is to sell their only remaining resource, which is the users of Firefox and their data. That's the situation they find themselves in. Now, again, I didn't really want to add to the FUD, so we'll move on from this. So the question then becomes, how do we fix it? And when I say we, really what I mean is Mozilla, but also we. Because Firefox is important, and not just because it's open source, but because it's the only alternative currently to Chrome. Now, already, basically, everyone uses Chrome or a Chrome-based browser, so... We're already in a situation where Firefox doesn't matter that much, but it going away would be a travesty and devastating for a lot of people. So something needs to be done. Now, again, I'm not a, a person who has studied business, and I don't expect to be offered the position of CEO at the Mozilla Foundation or the Mozilla Corporation anytime soon. Although I would happily take the job because I assume that I could do a better job than the people who have actually done it for the last 10 years, but... Maybe I'd be wrong. I, couldn't, I don't think I could do worse, to, to be honest with you, but that's beside the point. So the question I have to ask myself is, what would I do if, say, someone emailed me tomorrow and say, hey, Matt, would you like to be the CEO of Mozilla? And I was like, sure. <laughs> There's no way this is a scam, by the way. <laughs> so uh, Matt walks into the Mozilla Foundation headquarters in San Francisco, California. And what's the first thing I do? Well, the first thing I would do is take a pay cut. I don't need six million dollars or whatever it is they're paying. I don't need a million dollars. Pay me a hundred grand a year. I'd be happy. Now, I'm poor, so I would realize that a hundred grand is a lot of money for me. Now, granted, it's San Francisco, so I'm probably going to need 200 grand, but, or, you know, 400. <laughs> it is California. But, no matter what the pay cut is, the person who takes over has got to realize that they can't make millions of dollars anymore. They're not the type of corporation anymore that can afford to pay anyone that kind of money. They're just not in that situation. Maybe someday they can be if they hire someone who knows how to make Firefox profitable. Maybe they can be. But right now, they're not there. So stop draining the resources by paying the whole C-suite exorbitant amount of amounts of money. That's the first thing that I would do. Now, it is very easy for me to say that, given the fact that I don't have this opportunity, right? If someone, if I walked into the headquarters as the new CEO, it'd be really hard for me to say, well, you know, I don't really need that $6 million. So, yeah, I understand if someone offered me $6 million, I'd probably take it. But if I, if uh, we're being objective, that's the first thing that would have to happen is like the C-suite just can't make that amount of money. It just can't happen. So that's the first thing. The next thing, and this is the harder part to say, is that they need to cut staff. 750 or 1,000 people is too many. They don't have the products for it. They don't, I don't know how many people actually work on Chrome at Google, but Google can hire as many people to work on Chrome as they want. You want to know why? They make a trillion dollars a year or whatever it is, you know, they make a ton, a ton of money. And uh, so they can they can hire 10,000 people to work on a browser and it won't hurt their bottom line. Mozilla can't do that. They don't make that m amount of money. So they have to trim a little bit. So I would say cut it in half. If it's 750, you know, cut it down to under 500, you know, 400, somewhere around that line and see how it goes. You know, keep the people who absolutely have to, to stay there to keep... Firefox up and running, and then perhaps, and this is a weird thing, actually hire, you know, a whole, some star designers, some star programmers or whatever, somebody who can kickstart the ideas engine, because Firefox itself is actually stalled. They don't have any new ideas, and they haven't had in years. So they need, 
they either need to have the people who are already on staff taken off the leash, or they need to bring in some new blood from the money that they've saved by cutting some of the old people out. Now, I hate to say, you know, have people lose their jobs because, you know, that is always a hard thing to do. But in this situation, we want Firefox to actually survive. You have to make some hard choices. So the second part would be to cut people. The, thir the third part for me would be to hire some people who actually have new ideas and say, hey, you want to know what? We want to take Firefox to the next level. We want to have some new ideas. How can we make browsing the web better? Not only that, but how can we make it better than Chrome? How can we do that? And kick it around. Also, you're an open source company. This is a community full of very intelligent people. Open that shit up. Put a poll out on straw poll or something. I don't know. Let people contribute to this idea pool. Say, hey, what would you guys like to see in Firefox? We're going to do it. We won't do all of them, but we're going to we're going to do it. We're going to take Firefox and make it a community thing again. And we're going to take the best ideas and we're going to do them. And that's not only going to make Firefox better and more appealing to a wider base, but also it will light a fire underneath the community because they'll feel a part of it. The community will then feel as if they have a stake in Firefox survival instead of just fleeing in droves to alternatives like LibreWolf or Waterfox or just basically back to Chrome. So that's the next thing that I would do. I would transform Firefox and I'd let the community be a part of it. The next thing that I would do is I would take whatever remaining money I have from Google and spend it all on advertising. Now, I don't think this is the be-all, end-all. It's not going to solve all the problems, but I bet you if you ask the vast majority of normies, the people who aren't, you know, in the FOSS community, if what Firefox is, the vast majority are probably going to say, oh, I don't know what Firefox is. Some of them will know, but those are people probably over the age of 35 because they probably remember back in the day when Firefox was a big deal. Asks anyone from Gen Z who's just a normie, they probably ain't gonna know. And that's a big deal. So you have to get your name out there. You know, put some effort into marketing. Maybe save a little bit of money for when Firefox has been revamped, but then go through and actually do the thing and let people know that you actually exist. The last thing that I would do is basically rinse and repeat. I need to as the CEO of this company, ensure that I have the best browser ever and that people know about it. So basically, the entire point of this video is that they need to make Firefox the focus again. And right now it's not. They don't seem to care about Firefox anymore. In fact, all they see Firefox as is a means for data collection, it appears. And that's not good because that means that they are basically turning into what every other corporation out there is. And that's only okay if you have a means of making actual money, you know. So right now they don't. Their own, this is their only play and that's not good. So they need to rethink things if they're going to survive. And they need, so like I said, they need to make Firefox the best thing ever. They need to make it better than Chrome. They need to have features that Chrome doesn't have. And it can't just be privacy, like because people don't care about privacy as much as they should. So they have to create actual user-facing features that people care and would like to use. And then they need to tell people about them. That's what they need to do. Now, the question then becomes, are they actually going to do that? And the answer to that is no. Firefox is dead. I'm, so, I'm sorry, like, it, there's no chance of someone who gets paid that amount of money and who wants to keep pay, get making that kind of money taking a pay cut and they have to like they have to so the fact that that's those two things are in conflict we can just call it now firefox is dead and it when it actually comes when the lights actually get turned off in san francisco for the final time not only are a lot of people going to lose their jobs but the open source community is going to lose the last open source browser that means anything. And I know that there are other browsers out there that are open source, but they're all based on Firefox. Every single one of them, Tor, Zen Browser, LibreWolf, 
wet fox, water fox, or whatever it's called, you know, you name it. We have all of these offshoots. Not a single one of them has the resources to actually develop the browser part. They don't. That's the reason why they forked Firefox in the first place. You have to be a major corporation with a lot of money coming in to actually do this. You need a few hundred employees to do it. And nobody else has that. So it's going to cause a big problem when it happens. And I'm predicting it. I'm not the first person to predict it, but I'm predicting it now that Firefox is going to be shut down eventually within the next few years. Because I don't foresee them making the changes that they need to make. Like, like they have to find innovation somewhere and they're not focusing on Firefox. They're focusing on AI, which is fine, but right now AI is not profitable for anybody because they're just pouring resources into making it good. So and, and tell that's, uh, you can't pour resources into a technology that isn't ready yet for anybody. Like you, you don't have the amount of resources to do that. Microsoft is investing like a hundred billion dollars or some crazy amount of money, way more than Mozilla makes in 10 years. They can't, they don't have the resources to make AI good. So they can't do that. The only thing that they'll probably end up doing is just taking chat GBT and rebranding it like they did with a VPN. So AI is not the answer. They have got to focus on new innovations that actually come from within, not from Google or some other place. So, and, and I, I just don't see them doing it. So anyways, on that very happy note, that's it for this one. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon. That link will be in the video description. If you want to support me, you can do so on Patreon at patreon.com slash the Linuxcast. You can also support me on Ko-fi and YouTube. Those links will be in the video description as well. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very much for your support. I truly do appreciate it thank you guys so very very much i know that the economy is shit and it's getting shittier <laughs> so the fact that you guys support me uh, as much as you can uh, truly does mean the world to me so thank you so very very much for that thanks everybody for watching if you want to support me you can do so patreon as i said patreon.com slash linuxcast or if you actually want something back for your money other than just a weekly podcast you can actually get some merch by heading over to the store this is an example of that merch. If you want to go to shop.linuxcast.org, you too can be a Linux nerd. You can't be a Linux nerd without the hat. It's just the way it is. Shop.linuxcast.org. So thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.